We just want to welcome everyone for, and thank you for joining us at Rua International Ministries. We're here located in Florida, and I'm Pastor Sean, and this is my wife. So is your wife, so? And we are very pleased that you're able to be even with us this day. And we believe that this word that we have is a word spoken in due season that's able to change, that's able to transform, and it's even able to equip your life. So if you like to hear more and know more about us, you can subscribe at Rua International Ministries on YouTube. And we also have a website you can go to where you can find more information about us, our time, where we're located, even at ruaintministries.com. And just as the word says in Proverbs 25, 25, as cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. We hope you're blessed this day, and thank you, and God bless you. Praise God. Um, we're going to finish. This will be the last part of what we continued. It was, uh, it was uh, we are talking about getting out of our space. Because God, we were talking about last time, if anyone remembers, and then uh, we're just talking about getting out of our space where God gets us out of our space to put us in his place. So sometimes we get so used to or comfortable in where we're at, but God will allow us to take us out of our comfort zone, but he never leaves us comfortless, you know? Because when he calls us out, he'll call us out of somewhere, sometimes where we haven't been before, but we were talking about last time, Three things we're talking about our comfort zone. We're talking about our complacent place. Sometimes we just become complacent where we're at. And we're talking about mediocrity, where we're like not striving to go nowhere. So this time we're going to do it a little different. But it was those three things we're touching on. But we're going to touch on a few other things because God wants us to get us out of our space. He, he calls us out. And sometimes when he calls us out, it could be all sometimes out of where we lived. Some people get too comfortable even in the same city, the same place, the state that they're in. And God may have you to go another place, another country, you know, because he's the one that sets the boundaries and destinations, for what he's planned for our life. And a lot of times we could get comfortable with where we're at, who we're with, or, you know, with the people we're around. And God takes us out because he has a people that he's called us to at times. And if you look in the Bible, it shows it. God actually took Paul to, he, in Galatians, he said he was a preacher to the Gentiles, where Peter, he said, was one to the Jews. He was to reach his own people. Paul, in the book of Acts, when you look, he was trying to reach the Jews the whole time. But the lot, Jesus, when he called him, it was a lot to minister to the Gentiles because when he said, I now clean my hands, I believe it's Acts chapter, I believe it was 18. He said, I, I clean my hands from the Gentiles and no longer will I preach. And then everything started going smooth for him. But before they were harassing him, stoning him, coming after him. And the, but they were jealous. They, they wanted him to be part of them, but they didn't want him to share what he had to the others, especially Jesus. So they came after him, you know, but he called, he was called to the, he said he first preached to the Jews first, then to the Gentiles. But when you look at his testimony of how he was called out, when he started preaching to the Gentiles, they were receptive to it. A lot of the Jews, there was some that came, but a lot of them he called because he went to Thessalonica, he went to Ephesus, he went to Galatia, and God was calling to reach the other nations. And he was taking them out of sometimes what we're familiar with. And that's one of the things I want to touch on today, our familiarity. You know, sometimes we get too familiar where we're at. It's familiar with people, it's familiar with places, and it's familiar with things. But God wants to take us sometimes out of that familiarity place, you know, to put us somewhere where we might not even met the people, know who they are because he's called us to reach a people. And sometimes we get too 
as far as familiar and just you know where we're like got to be there we don't want to go no nowhere else but god at times will take us away from there and sometimes when we're somewhere else he'll bring us back to where we don't want to be you know there there's there's people who have fear and I, this is the first one I want to speak out their fear of going back because of things they've done wrong things that happened in the past and they don't want to deal with what happened in the past you know because they think God's able to handle whatever happened in our life and he's able to reconcile it or able to even as far as fix it or whatever goes on in our life I'm not saying every time we have to go back and visit it that isn't the case because with our life when we're saved old things have passed away and all things become new but sometimes God will take you when you've been gone a while and bring you back to reach a people to bring them out right I'll, I'll share this if we go to the book of Exodus and we'll look at Moses because Moses you, you know in Exodus 1 2 and 3 Moses ended up you know God put him allowed him to be saved and raised up in Pharaoh's house to learn the ways of the people then call him out of Pharaoh he killed someone because he didn't know he knew these were his people even though his mom was able to even take care of him while he was still in Pharaoh's house that God allowed it that's God's way the daughter took in Moses and then she was raised him, but she took one of the people to be able to raise Moses, which turned out to be his mom. So she was hired even to raise up Moses, even though she was the one that let him out. But they knew if God was allowed to do that, put him in the house, they even have his own people take care of him, though, but to learn the ways of how these people are. And when he got out, when he raised up, when he was growing up with Pharaoh, you know, the son and everyone, then he ended up seeing his people be beat and his heart was moved. Sometimes we can have a sensing to do something, but we can do it the wrong way. We do it in the flesh rather than do it in God's timing and his way. Well, he, he, he knew God was call, He felt something in his heart that God was calling him, but he didn't know what to do. So he handled it the way he only knew how. He killed the one of the like Matt, the slave masters because he saw him beating one of his fellow brothers so he killed that guy and tried hiding him well the word says you know your sins will find you out you know you can cover it but your sins eventually find you out so they found out that you know one of them told on him so he fled and when he went into the wilderness you know he, he met a priest and then he ended up marrying one of the daughters but he began being a here he's in one of the highest places and now he's at the lowest place being a shepherd and if you look at a shepherd in egypt they were an abomination to the egyptians and so here he is taking care of sheep but god will take what you've done and learned to learn how you're leading sheep to learn people to lead people he did it with king david he did it with moses he told peter that you caught fish but i'm gonna make you a fish and become a fisherman fisher of men you know so he'll take the talent sometimes you know how to do and use it to do it supernaturally to be able to do it for the people he'll take the talent you use to be able to lead flock or do a job and use that same gifting now to help the people, to lead them or lead them out of somewhere where they were before. But see, God will take what you were involved in before. He was in Egypt, he was with them. He took them out of Egypt and, or he ran, fled from Egypt and he was in the wilderness, but he spent 40 years. If you look, he was 40 years when he fled, 40 years old. He was 40 years in Egypt. Then God had him go back to Egypt and take him out and spend another 40 years. So he was 120 by the time he passed. Yeah. So it was 40, 40, 40. That was the number God used him. But 40 years being raised up in the house, 
then 40 years separated from the people, and then now he went back to bring the people, but because of the rebellion, he spent another 40 years with the people in the wilderness mm -hmm. at that time. So it took him 100, 120 years for his lifespan of w what happened to him. So here in chapter 3, I'm just kind of doing a little intro here. But you, I, I'll say this, faith, and I was talking to someone and, uh, about it, but faith means now it's a present word, right? So God will take you from your present situation and bring you into where your destination is, you know? So he'll take you out where you're present because faith is now present, but faith also moves. It moves towards not from just the present into where you're supposed to go. You know, it sees beyond where you're at now. It's not just seeing your situation. It's seeing beyond where you're at. So it says here in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock what to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God even to Horeb and so he obviously he probably didn't know that was the mountain of God mm -hmm. but the, this was a place because that would be later on Jerusalem and everything he, he'll be over there and so he says and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush see Sometimes God will do things to capture your attention. And it might not be always the way you think it's going to be. But see, here with him, he appeared at a flaming bush, which he probably never seen before. I haven't ever seen one if it was on fire. It didn't say it was in the spirit either, where he, his eyes were open, he saw in the spirit. But it said an angel appeared. And what happened? It was a flame of a flame of fire in a bush. God wants to try to capture our attention to get our focus off of our present situation to get our focus on him. Yeah. And so he says here, and behold the bush burned with fire and the bush wasn't consumed. So this was something he never I haven't seen it either. And so he says, and Moses said I will now turn aside. So it's like this, you see something, you're like, man, I don't know what that is over here, but let me uh, just look and check this thing out, because you don't know what it is. It's a burning bush going on, and you're like, man, it didn't say exactly the time of day it was, but obviously if you see a fire going on. He said, in the bush, he saw this, he said, I'll turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. So it was capturing his attention. And when the Lord saw, see, because the God looks upon what we're doing. So he notices what we're doing. And he always tries, he wants to draw us near to him. Amen. Because he, he'll, he'll use people. I, I'll, t I'll tell you this. I was going to bring up the story the other day. But I, I'll tell you this. A guy came in and he told me the story. And, and see, God wants to get our attention. Sometimes he does it in different ways where we don't know how. The guy told me something bizarre happened to him. I was like, really? Because I'll talk to him about the Lord. I'll pray with him. It's someone that comes into the work. And I said, man, what, what happened? He goes, man, it was real bizarre. I said, well, what went on? He said, I went to the doctor. And he said, uh, what's it called? The doctor told me, you know, you, you, you need to work on yourself because you have a heart problem. And, you know, you got to work on your health. You know, he told him that. And uh, he said, oh, okay. And so obviously you have to do change, you know, change. So the doctor said, listen, instead of you paying this much money, I know a place you could go to, you, it'll charge you less for the medication. So he went to the store and while he was there, he saw the food counter, right? <laughs> no, so he, he told me this and I'm, I see where it was going. So he said he ordered a bunch of different meats, right? And I, and I said, man, the, the doctor just got telling you, brother, you know, you know, you have a heart condition. He goes, yeah, I know, but you know, I like food. So he said, I, I started ordering all this meat. And then I was getting it. And this guy walked up to me out of nowhere. 
and he started yelling at me, saying, no, tell him, do not eat that. He goes, this is going to ruin you. He goes, don't, he screamed so loud. He was like, my mouth was hanging open. And he goes, he said, man, it's, it was hanging open for like three hours thinking about what this guy, he yelled at me. I said, listen, bro. I said, you know, you just got done seeing the doctor and the doctor told me what to do. Now God will use people and he may use things to do because he's trying to tell you things you ain't paying attention to. So he'll do the way he'll work with you and how to help you. So here you are, he might have been telling you and you ain't even listening. You looking at your situation and obviously it's food. And you like, man, let me go ahead and get this. I'm saying, brother, what's more important, your health or the food? Because the food's going to be there. But if you just got done leaving the doctor and then you go in there, I don't know who this man was. He didn't know. The Lord said, be not afraid to entertain strangers for some have entertained angels unaware in Hebrews 13. Now, entertaining means to help them out and all that but in this case this one might have been helping you and i don't know if it was an angel but for this guy to yell at you when you grab the meat and tell her screaming no do not do this it will ruin you i was like man i said did you buy the meat he goes well i bought half of it i said <laughs> i said man i said see the lord can try to get to you in different ways you know that's like you driving down the road i mean the signs are telling you danger don't go down and it's blinking lights and everything and you still going does it need to take someone to jump out in front of the car to have you stop before you go over a cliff or something you know because you he saw your condition you don't know what may happen you might eat the meat and something may happen you might have high blood pressure you don't know and he could be screaming at you you may not like the way how he's screaming well no one likes how a parent screams at him but if they telling you the truth you need to listen and so sometimes God will get your attention in different ways you know and i said i don't know if it's the lord but for someone to come up to you out of nowhere and yell at you just after you left the doctors man that isn't no coincidence i mean it, it, the holy spirit could have been speaking to you trying to nudge you and he's got to send someone to be like sometimes he'll send you a vision because you ain't getting it you know i gotta do it this way he knows how to reach people where they're at you know mm -hmm. so to get them especially if sometimes you're not listening well here moses you know it's 40 years He's hanging around. He got married, he got a couple of kids, two kids. And here he is. Here's the Lord. Now it's time. Because God has a time. He'll call you now. Right. You know? Yeah. He, he'll, I, he'll, get, he'll get things and he'll work with you, but he'll call you. Some people are like real receptive and like, okay, Lord, I'm doing it. You know, I, I'm going. It's like, Peter, just bid me. I'm coming out the boat. I don't care. The other ones all like in their same situation i ain't going out there forget that but <laughs> peter's like all right yeah lord bid me i'll come i don't care and then he at least stepped out you know and got out of the boat you know i got out of what regular condition he was in so here moses he said in verse four it says the lord saw that he turned aside to see and god called him unto him out of the bush the midst of the bush and said Moses Moses and he said here am I and what he say he said draw not nigh hither he said don't draw close to me yet but he said what put off your shoes from off your feet see because your your feet you know always goes the places you want but see this time when he's telling you I'm taking you out of your natural condition. You know, the things you're used to putting on yourself. You know, you're used to doing things yourself. You know, putting on your own shoes, doing your own thing. You know, that, that type of stuff. But God's like, listen, you take off your shoes now. Because you're stepping out of 
what condition you're usually in and you're about to walk now on holy ground because I'm calling you into what I have you to be, do for me. Mm -hmm. So he says right here, for the place where I'm thou standest is holy ground. And moreover, he said, I am the God of your father. Mm -hmm. See, he was mentioning, he might have heard in the past, maybe the mom told him about you know the ways and who you know who we came from abraham isaac and jacob when he was growing up mm -hmm. you know it says a few things in acts chapter 7 when stephan was uh preaching to the the uh they were stiff-necked people and uh you know hard of hearing mm -hmm. and so he had a he preached the whole word to them from the time mm -hmm. abraham all the way up to when Jesus came to die and rose again and still they were so hard hardened that they closed their ears and they had to stone him because they just didn't want to hear it, you know, even though it was the truth. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I'm the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He didn't say the God of Israel because that's a different thing. There's a God of Jacob, but he was also changed to the God of Israel. So God of Jacob is when he was of the old way, but God's still a God of mercy, a God of grace. And then he was called the God of Israel, you know, where now he said you'll no longer be Jacob, but your name will be Israel. Because why? He's called him over a place, you know, Abraham, Isaac, and it's really Israel you know what he had him to be because that's where the children were going to come through and he said and Moses hid his face and he was afraid to look upon God you know when God really gets your attention a fear of God will come on you mm -hmm. I I'm telling you when you really get close you see who you really are when you see who he is because you know then man I'm not even worthy to be in this place, but it's only because of Jesus you make me worthy. When you draw close to him, because he didn't just say, there's people that got close to God, but this one, he said, come take off your shoes for the place you're going to stand is holy ground. And his presence, he hid his face in there. The other one you see, Isaiah. When he came and he saw the glory of God and his train of his robe in Isaiah 6, and then the angels were going around about God uh, around about the throne and saying holy 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 the Lord God, God almighty and then you know where the train of his glory of the, the the glory was coming and then Isaiah looked and he said man he said I'm a man of unclean lips in other words he was saying his mouth is foul he, he's not even worthy to be in there but the angel came and touched some coals took coals and put them on his mouth to cleanse them, you know? So, but thank God through the blood of Jesus, he said we're cleansed from all unrighteousness. Amen, that we're able to be able to be presented, you know, blameless before his throne of glory, amen? Because it said, let us come boldly before the throne of grace so we can obtain mercy and find grace in a time of need. But when you come boldly, that means you can come confidently because you know who you are and you know whose you belong to, which is him. Amen. You know, where you're now made righteous through Christ Jesus, not of our own works. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he told him here, he hid his face because he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters, uh, those, and for I know their sorrows. See, God sees our tears. He hears our prayers when we cry out. He saw the children of Egypt, but now he's setting a point in time where he's raising up a leader to bring his people out. Amen. He, he told Abraham in the beginning that they'll be in, they'll, by children, he said Israel be in Egypt for 400 years. He told he told them, and pro, it was like a prophecy, about 410 years that they'll be in there, but he's going to deliver his people before it happened mm -hmm. because they were in the Egypt for that long. And so he says here, he said, and I am come down in verse 8 to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and large, and unto a land flowing with milk and honey. 
a place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I also have seen their oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore. And he said, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And so, look at verse 11. Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. See, he wasn't, he, he, this is first time, and now he's thinking about, man, why, who am I to go ahead and do this? Now, sometimes God will put you in a, a, a have you do a task, it's bigger than yourself. See, Jeremiah, we talked about last time, he said, I'm just but a child. He said, don't call yourself a child. I called you to the nation to pluck out it, to d deliver them out, to tear it down, destroy it, and to root it out and then to rebuild it again. Okay. But you know, that looks too big. But see, God's not always about always small things. Even though he looks upon the small things, he knows every hair on our head. He cares about those things too. But he'll call us on the big things bigger than ourselves, That's right. you know? Amen. And sometimes it, it's not all, it could be things we fear about it, but God shows us he's with us, amen, if we learn to step out with him. Because obviously this task here, he's going into a place where he knew they were taskmasters, they were in bondage. So that could be something afraid to go back into. That's right. And so he said, who am I that I, I should deliver him out of his, Israel out of Egypt? And verse 12 said, he said, certainly I will be with you. And he said, and this shall be a token, a sign unto you. See, God will confirm his word with signs following. Amen. If he calls you, he'll, he'll confirm it. He said he'll confirm it in the mouth of two or three witnesses. When the Lord told us to go to Oklahoma, I said, Lord, well, you want us to move. I don't have a problem. Then he told us where to go in Oklahoma. And he told us, go, Rama. I said, well, confirm it. Man, three days later, I get a confirmation. Three days later after that, I get another confirmation. Then after that, I kept getting everywhere I look, it's Oklahoma. I'm seeing Oklahoma plates. I turn on TV, it's Oklahoma. I couldn't get Oklahoma out of my head. Everywhere I'm looking at, it's all Oklahoma. So if you want a sign, he'll give you a sign, and you'll know, because he will be like, man, am I seeing things? I'm driving from, cars are from a Oklahoma page. I'm like, man, what's down there? I never even seen Oklahoma. Now I'm seeing Oklahoma everywhere. So yeah, I'm just saying he'll confirm his word, what it is. And he said right here, certainly I'll be with you, and it shall be a token unto you that I have sent you. See, that's like an apostle. Because apostle in the New Testament, which they didn't call him in the Old Testament, apostle means sent one. See, some people are sent where God will be with them. He'll confirm his word with signs following. And some people just went. And it's like, man. Oh, excuse me. In verse 12, it says, And when you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And then he said, verse 13, And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto the God of your fathers, have sent me unto you, they shall say, What is his name? And he asked them, What, what shall I say unto him? And then he told them, Say that I am that I am. And he said unto them, Say unto the children of Israel, I am that sent me. And God said, Moreover, thou shalt say in verse 15 to the children of Israel, The Lord your God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me, and this is the name forever, and this shall be a memorial unto your ge generations. So when we look at it and you read further, you could see he went there, and then Pharaoh, I mean, if you know you're really sent, he could have just took Moses, Pharaoh, and said, You go ahead and you're going to work with the people. But somehow, Pharaoh didn't kill Moses, and he standed up and showed signs, ten signs to him. He just sent the locusts, the lice, the flies, made the blood, you know, and there was a whole test, but it was ten times he did it. 
but Pharaoh kept Hardy in his heart. But see, God showed he was with them. And see, when God's really with you, he'll, he'll back you up. You know, he's not there just where he'll send you somewhere and not be there with you to back up where he has you. So he'll take you out of where you were and he'll at times send you back to a place where sometimes you don't want to go. I know in my past, there was a place I didn't even want to go, but he sent me back there. I, I didn't even want to deal with Honestly, I don't know if they're watching. I'm saying I didn't want to go back to my family's home, to be honest. I was going to go somewhere else. I was cool. I was just me and the Lord, and I was good. I was even trying to see anyone. You know, I was like, I'm good. But see, the Lord has another thought on his mind. And sometimes he'll send you back because God wants to see them saved as well. You know, I, I was good to me. I was thinking they didn't want to hear it anyways. I'm cool. I'll go out wherever he sends me in the world. I'll preach the word. It don't matter to me. I don't need to go back home because I seen other brothers. They leave. They got nowhere to go. And I was like, man, I'm cool with that. Let's I'll go. I, you can put me where I, I'll go on the street. I'll go and preach the word. I don't even care. I don't need to go home. But uh, he, he sent me to go home. And know what? I realized the Lord was there. And he was showing up, and God moved, and, I, and you know, I, I seen the result of it, how God drew my mom to the Lord, draw my brother to the Lord. Now I'm sitting here, and now he's probably drawing my dad to the Lord, because that's what I'm saying. I didn't want to come here, and he sent me back here. So I was like, okay, Lord, however you want to do this, it, it's good. But I know it's not just about that. I know there's a reason for everything why he sends you. And so... He'll send you out of that where you're afraid of, and he'll let you know. He told Joshua after Moses died, he said, be not afraid. He goes, Moses, my servants died now, and now, you know, be strong and of good courage. So he was letting them know, you're going to lead a people. It, it may look bigger than yourself, but now it's time for you to go and lead the people, even though you may not want to right and so sometimes it'll be be like that and here we'll look at a different situation it, it, it's uh, it's getting out of your comfort getting out of your space where God may be familiarity and God wants to call us out of being familiar with everything you know it says here it says he agreeeth not with the old so you see old can't agree with the new right so how can two walk together unless they be agreed, right? How can two touch unless they be agreed? So it says, and no man putteth new wine into what? Old bottles, the old nature. This is what he's talking about. Else the new wine will burst. The bottles will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into what? New bottles. Mm -hmm. You, an old vessel can't be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's got to be made new again by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And then he fills you with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You got to have a new heart. God, so you got a person's got to receive Jesus in their life. If they don't, the Holy Spirit, it, it'll just tear it. You know, I'm saying it won't work that way because the old and new can't walk together. Amen. So he says, that's why he even tells us, put off the old man. And put on the new man. Amen? Amen. Don't walk after the flesh, but walk after the spirit. So he says, this is where I'm, I'm getting. But new wine must be put in new bottles, and both are preserved, or they're saved. And no man, look at this, and this is where familiarity comes. No man also having drunk old wine immediately desires new, for he saith the old is the better. See, some people are so familiar with their old way of doing things, they don't want to step into something new. And God wants to get us out of the old way of thinking, the old way of doing things. Ch churches do it too. You know, they, they go, you can, that's why denominations start. They start off with, uh, uh, what's his name? There's so many, Charles. Uh, no, just different traditional churches denominations they go after the ones who have revivals mm -hmm. and they take on their names mm -hmm. and then afterwards the way he did it 
they try still keeping the way the same way and it doesn't work mm -hmm. because God does a new thing. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a different thing for every generation. It That's isn't right. always the same because you're dealing with different people, but he'll, you know, they want to keep the exact same way. But see, we got to learn to move in the spirit That's and not move in the flesh. That's right. You know, that's why Jesus, when he healed people, he didn't do it the same way all the time. People want to put God in a box and say, this is the way he only does it. No, God, it says, I always quote that, and it says, how manifold is the wisdom of God, is, or how manifold are the works of God, in wisdom, he created all of it, you know, the earth and everything. Mm -hmm. So there's a man of full way. You know, one guy, he put dirt on his eye, spit in his eye. Another guy, he just spoke the word to him. So he doesn't want us to get from just where we got to look and this is the only way it has to be done. It's like coming in with a preconceived idea. You know, when you come to a service, when you go to church, you can't walk in with a preconceived idea. You're meant, you need to change the way you think about God because God is wide, he's big. Mm -hmm. So you can't say, okay, this is what happened last week, so this week is going to happen this way. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't work like that because we are being led mm -hmm. by the Spirit of God. That, that's yeah. why it says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the yeah. sons of God. Yeah. So some churches, they might dry up because they're trying to keep traditions of men. It may have been God at a time in the past, and he wants to do something different. You know, he told them, what's it called, in Joshua, when they were cross over Jordan, that they were no longer eating the manna or the old. They got something new that they're coming, and he was bringing them to a new land. So he was showing them something different, because God can show you different revelations of who he is. We can get it through his word, but when you see it manifested, it's different. The way Jesus, all the things he's done, it says if they were to be written, it wouldn't even contain them. All the books in the world couldn't contain what he did for three and a half years. I mean, he would be walking, he'd be doing work morning to night for three and a half years. I don't know, it doesn't say how much he rested. It said he got up early in the morning to pray. He got up, he be all the way till evening. It didn't say much about how he even slept. One time it mentioned how he was tired, and that's when he talked to the Samaritan woman at the well. You know, then he said he was tired about it. But the whole time, he, he worked. I mean, he was moving. It was the work of faith I'm talking about. But he prayed and kept in the presence of God. But that after he came up out of that fast 40 days and overcome the devil, you know, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and what happened? He came out in the power of the Spirit of God. And then he said, the Spirit of God is upon me because he has anointed me. And the Jews were still stuck in their way. They were like, we never seen no one speak like this with this kind of authority before. You know, who is th this? He's the son of uh, Joseph, you know, the, the Mary, the mother, and his brother James. He's a carpenter. Who's this guy coming in talking like this? You know, so they're caught up on the outside or what the past was. You know, because he grew up in the world, but he, when he came, he came into the world as a virgin. That's a miracle right there. You know, if they knew anything, they would know, you know, but they weren't always. That's why he would tell them, you think you have eternal life. Search the scriptures to, and look in them because the one you want to kill, you think it. He said before I, Abraham was, I am. You know, mm -hmm. and then he had a consistently. But after him, you look at Peter when he was in the book of Acts, when he spoke the word in boldness and he told them and he quoted the book of Joel. And he said his pouring out his spirit upon all flesh. And then he told them to repent and to convert. But later you look, I believe it's chapter four or, or five when he was walking. It said his shadow, the people would follow it and be healed. Now, you didn't read about that anywhere too much in the Bible, but there you see uh, something new doing, being done because God's Jesus said greater works will we do than these. Amen. But God doesn't want us to be put him in a box. He can do a new thing, new thing with us out of our familiar place. 
even on a job, in a place, maybe take you from where you were to put you somewhere you've never been before. Right. Yeah, and he wants to take us out of the places where we're familiar with. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I know a brother, and we talked, and, uh, you know, I told the brother, because he grew up where I was, I'm talking about, but he grew up in the city, and I told the brother, listen, your lifestyle is a pattern, and you keep doing the same thing over and over. And you know, going in and out of prison and all this. I told him, brother, this is what you, I told him this is what you need to do. It was something out of my heart. I said, you need to leave the state. And I told him what state to go to and get help. And now he's been there for years and his life's gotten better to, from what it was. But sometimes you're so familiar with the people you're around, you know, God wants to get you out of that, you know, because it isn't changing. That's why it tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, be not deceived. It says evil communications corrupt good manners. Sometimes we want to hang out with the same people we were before we were saved with them. And God's like pulling you out. And I don't want to go all the way there yet. I was going to talk about that after. But that's relationships, you know, yeah. that we're accustomed friends and all that. Some guy, sometimes God will separate them from you because he knows what's best for you. You know, sometimes even churches, I see it all the time. That's why you got it. You got Korean churches. You got Spanish churches. You got African churches. And people, God's a God of nations. That's right. See how we are? We're of nations and right here. God's of, when they were in the upper room, it was 120 from all different nations. God doesn't want us just being of all one nation because that's familiarity where you're comfortable, where you're familiar right there. You know, it's one thing if you can understand, but with technology we have where they can Talk, you can get interpretation and people can say it because they wear the headphones when you're in a church. But God wants sometimes even in the church world to get out of the comfort zone because he may call you into a different type of church. My, the church I, I always went to, me, I was the only guy up in there that was what called. I didn't care though, but that's that's where I felt like I was supposed to be all the time. So it didn't matter to me. I, I didn't care. It, it didn't bother me a bit, and I, I actually enjoyed it. But I, I liked the way that was, and I didn't know other things. But I was like, man, you know, because God's alive. So e even out of our familiarity, I want you to see something. See uh, here. I want you to see something. If we go to the book of Ruth, I believe that's Ruth. <clears throat> Joshua, Joshua, Judges, and then Ruth. Right? Yeah. So, Ruth, when we look at her, it's a small book, it's only four chapters here. But if you look at this, when Naomi, right, she left her country, right, because of circumstances, mm -hmm. and she went into the land she wasn't even supposed to go to, Moab, you know, with these people. But it turned out her, the, the girl, the ladies of Moab married her sons, and then they died, and then her husband died. So the two sisters, the two daughters-in-law were still with her. But it was time that they heard things were growing back in uh, Israel, you know, where they were from. They, things were happening back and stuff. There was no longer a famine. So she was like, I need to go back, you know, back to my homeland. So she asked the two daughters-in-law, and it's right here in verse uh, 6 of chapter 1. And so it says, then she arose with her daughters-in-law. Man, time's flying. It says that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in her country of Moab how the Lord had visited his people and given them bread. And so wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her and went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. So they were following her. Now, I'm not focused just on 
Naomi, uh, Naomi, I'm focused more on the two daughters-in-law because see, they never been to Judah. They weren't ever at Jerusalem over in Israel. So here they are, they're used to Moab, you know, and that was even, that was like an abomination to Israel anyways, because of how Moab started from Lot's kids, you know, where the daughters had kids with the dad, Lot, when they were left Sodom and Gomorrah, you know. So it says here that Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, go and return each to her mother's house. And the Lord deal kindly with you as the Lord have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that you may find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them and lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with you unto your people. So they both said, We're going to return with you to your people. But you will see, because sometimes you see two, two were on the cross. One will believed in Jesus and the other one mocked him. It says two will be in bed, one will be taken, the other will be left, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes you see two. I've seen it with myself. I, I, I would, me and another brother, we were there. I, I don't know where he's at today, but you know, the brother sat down, prayed with both of us, and I stayed and held fast to it. And I was like, man, I want this. And the other one kind of just went his way. And I was like, oh, man, but I said there was something I needed and I was holding on to it because I wasn't going to let go. Yeah. You know, David said in Psalms, my, my, my soul fa holds fast or stuck fast to your testimonies mm -hmm. or my or my soul follows hard after you, O Lord. And so that, you know, that's something no matter what it was, just like the woman, the cypher Phoenician, she wouldn't let go. She wanted her to see her daughter healed, you know, delivered from the devil that vexed her daughter. And she came to Jesus, begged him. And he said, he said, it's not time for me to give my, you know, bread to dogs. But see, she didn't give up on him. She said, well, even the dogs, the dogs eat off the master's table. Yes. Then, then he was silent at first and wouldn't even say nothing to her. Some people, because they don't hear God, they just leave them. Like, he, just because you don't hear nothing from him. Or some people are like, well, I tried him. I didn't see nothing happen. So they just go on and do their thing. Nah, if you, you know, if you really want him, you'll press. You know, God sees right. when you're in desperate need, you know. Mm -hmm. But then she finally grabbed a hold of him and begged. And then he said, go home. You know, your daughter's healed of the death, you know, delivered of the vex from, she's healed of that. So you can go home. And he said, I haven't seen no great faith in all of Israel like her because she just believed and wouldn't let go, you know? And that's the kind of faith sometimes you need in a situation. No matter what anything seems like, you ain't going to be offended. I'm going to hold on. I ain't letting go. Just like uh, when uh, Elijah and all the people, he was found, Elisha was following him and said, it's their master servant's leaving. You, you need to stay. He said, no, hold your peace. I'm going. I'm a, he kept going from Bethel. He kept following him till he uh, received what he asked of when uh, Elijah left. And he said, no, nah, he was holding on. He wasn't letting go. And that's sometimes where the blessing's at, you know, because God will see how far you'll be able to go. Will you just, will you get easily offended and leave or allow someone to do say something or do something where it'll just cause you to go or you gonna hold fast, you know? You gonna go back to your familiar ways of what you used to do or you gonna hold on? Cause everyone's given an opportunity. I seen people that left that, got out from places and they get back into their familiar place and they go back into the same thing and it's like a cycle over and over again. But God wants to take us out of that to do something new in our life, mm -hmm. that we desire something new. You know, it's easy. I, I've been, we've, I mean, you guys came from, most of probably came from some, mm -hmm. some other country here or whatever, but sometimes you gotta leave the states too or where you're at or go, you know, and God will call you, but you know you hear from the Lord. You just don't go on your own. You gotta know God's telling you to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So he said, he, she said here, it says, 
they said, we surely will return. In verse 11, and said, Naomi said, turn again, my daughters. And he said, why will you go with me? Are you yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? So she said, turn again. She said it again twice, it's third time. She said, turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say, I have hope, I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons. Would you tarry for them till they were grown? Would you stay for them from having husbands? She said, Nay, my daughter, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is against me. She, she's looking at only her way of what she's thinking God can do. But God's bigger than that. And she wasn't seeing everything that God can do because the way he blesses us isn't always the way you think he might bless us. See, she wasn't, she's just thinking about her having a baby or raise up sons. No, God has a different way and we'll see it, you know, in the here. But look at this. It says, verse 14, they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah, who kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth, what clave unto her you know so cleaving is holding fast is something and you're not letting go even day day what job say though he slay me i'll still trust in him you know that's one of the sayings that other people quote but though he he slay me i'll still trust he also said we talked about before he said all the days while i wait for my appointed time till my change cometh so in other words, I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I'm going to wait till I see my change come. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you got, sometimes you may be in a situation, You go, that's all you can do is wait. But he said, having all done to stand, you'll stand there for. But I'll be like, I'm not going back to my old ways. I'm not going back to my old familiar ways things of how my habits of doing things because God has a new way and he delivered me out of that way and I don't need to go back there. I don't need to look back there. I need to look ahead of what he has planned and in store for me. You know, not what I used to do. And sometimes, you know, that's why we got to renew our mind. So we're not thinking all the when certain, the way you really know is when situations arise in your life. That shows you what's kind of in your heart and what needs to come out of you. You know, when a certain situation comes, it could be a familiar situation, just like there's familiar spirits and they know what you used to do. But you got to know you're recreated again and you're not that old person no more. And you got to tell the devil that ain't me. I ain't who I am. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And so he says here, it says here, uh, but Ruth clave to her. And verse 15, she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law has gone back unto her people. See that familiar place? Unto her gods. She ain't even thinking about the God of Abraham, Isaac. She said her gods more than one. And what? Return thou after thy sister-in-law. But see, when you cleave to something, you ain't letting go. She said, that's how you know when a person's really holding fast. The Ruth said, entreat me not to leave. She said, don't ask me to leave or to return from following after you. For whether you goest, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge or dwell. And your people shall be my people and your God, my God. See, that, that's being saved right there. Your God's going to be my God. I'm not going back to the gods because she already had it known the gods what she had was doing no good because look what happened. Their husband died. Her father-in-law died. It looks like bad things are happening. So why would you want to remain there? You know, who wants to be in a place where you see it was bad anyways. There was famine going on. I want to go somewhere where things are happening in my life. I don't want to keep being living in the same thing. But God will turn things around in your life. And so what happened? Verse 17, she said, Where you die, I'll die. And where you're buried, the Lord do so to me. And more also, if aught but death part from thee and me. 
And what happened, she saw that she was steadfastly minded and she went with her. And what ended up happening? She had ended up marrying Boaz, you know, and not a bozo. So she married a Boaz who was over the whole field. And he was a mighty man of wealth. I'm not saying everyone... Sometimes I don't get called. So I've seen people at church that get called. Oh, I'm going to marry me and mighty man of wealth. He's going to have all kind of money and all that. Sometimes God will have you marry someone and then you'll grow together and he'll be wealthy. That's you right. might just be looking at the situation, but God can also do something where he'll bring you to someone that may owe something. But see, what did it take her? She left where she was at. And went somewhere she never been before. Mm -hmm. And someone found her. She didn't chase him. It said, he that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and attains favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. She wasn't looking for him. He saw her and God gave her grace in her sight, in his mm -hmm. sight. Amen? Amen. So it wasn't she was up there, hey, Boaz, here I am. <laughs> you know, she coming from a different country. No, she was just trying to... Be with her, be obedient, be with her mother-in-law, and just try to get some food, and she was gleaning. Mm -hmm. But God gave her favor because he saw faith in her life that she left everything, but God was going to give her everything mm -hmm. for it. For all everything she left, God was going to bless her a hundredfold for that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. she left it, but you don't hear nothing about Oprah no more. Anything, there's no more. You just hear the first chapter, and that's it. And then that's that's where it left her. But then the focus, you see her. And then through her blessing, who did she have? She was given a son, Obed. Yeah. And then through Obed came Jesse. Yeah, and Jesus. through Jesse, it came King David. So God blessed her children that you see out of her lineage, a Moabite, which was an abomination, brought forth Jesse. Just because she got out of her familiar area, her familiar zone. Amen? Amen. And that's what we need to do. Yes. Man, whew, I don't know if I have time to go. You but can I, finish it. Uh, I, I try to go. Maybe I go too long on these things. But, uh, this is good. Yeah, but the, the one thing is, is with that is getting out of familiarity. And another one I want to talk about is like even relationships. Sometimes relationships hold us back from what God wants to do. You know, because the word says, Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk unless they be agreed? You know, sometimes we got people in our lives that don't need to be there. And they're the ones that hold us back because we're trying to hold on to the past when God wants to do something new, you know? And sometimes you got to sever things, right, in our life. Or God will say, I've had people severed out my life. It's like a knife. When they sever something, they cut it out. Yeah, it's like cutting something off or cutting it out. And it was old people from my past. But some of them, I, I, there's people that want to know the Lord and they came to the Lord. And that's cool. But there's other one. They were no good, but God severed them from my life because he knows what's best for me. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, you want the people that are right, that are taking you somewhere and not ta taking you back. Amen? Because that's just like Egypt. You know, they, they had a mentality. If we go to there, their mentality was where they, it said that you know they were taken out of egypt but egypt wasn't taken out of them you know like that first of all they weren't a recreated spirit again but they saw the hand of god move in them but you look at joshua and caleb and what ended up happening they had to deal with all of them for 40 years who were murmuring and complaining you know it started off that way that caused them to get 40 years because they murmured and complained about what was their situation when God delivered them right out of there with a mighty hand and signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. So sometimes God, believe me, he's long suffering and he's full of mercy. But sometimes you can ask him, Lord, who is it that you don't want in my life? Who, who is the people, if there's someone there that's holding me back, who is it that's there that it needs to be rid of? Or sometimes he's already been speaking to us. And sometimes we grow out of those things. Because sometimes there's relationships we could have had, but God's bringing you somewhere where you're growing out of those things. 
from the past, you know, of where we've been. That's, that's why it says here, I'll read a scripture. And, um, yeah, it's second, sorry. Second Corinthians 6. I'm sorry. Keeping us on our toes. Yeah, yeah, second Corinthians. It's almost similar, but this one says it a little different. And, and it says right here, it says, verse 14, it says, be not unequally yoked together. It says, with unbelievers. You know? See, God, God when we're renewing our mind, some of the conversations we had, we don't need to be talking like that no more. You know? Because some people will be talking like that to people you're around. Hey, I'll be like, I don't partake in that, man. You know? In that, in that kind of talk. But it, it says, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, you know? Because mm -hmm. yeah. what, we, what we're to do is to help people. We're to edify. We're to exhort. We're to draw people to the Lord. We don't want them drawing us to them, to the world. It's to draw, us to the, draw them to the Lord. Amen? Mm -hmm. And if they're not trying to go with there, then, you know, we don't need to be with that. I'm saying, but some things... It's saying to here, I'll read a little further. And what communion has light with darkness? So it has no common ground, you know? So that's why it tells us here in John 3, look at this. But see, some people even follow Jesus for certain reasons. Some follow him because of the miracles. You know, they were like, oh, because you saw the loaves of bread? Is that why? But he was talking about the leaven with the Pharisees. But some of them were following because of the miracles that were going on. You know, but he he told them if you believe, if you don't believe my words, believe in what you I do. But some of them were just following him, and then you see later on when he started talking about it in John chapter six about drinking the blood and eating the body. They could it would, they said this is a hard saying, and it said they left him. And then he told Peter, "Will you guys also go also?" And he goes, "Where are we gonna go? Who we have? You have the words of life, and you know you're Christ." And he goes, well, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he knew, but some of them left him. Mm -hmm. You know, it was uh, quite a few found, but some left. They were like, man, we don't even know what he's talking about. Talking about eating body and eat, drinking blood, you know, like cannibalism or something. But uh, he, he says here in, in John 3, what does it say? It says right here, uh, verse 18. I think you should clarify that because you don't want that to go like that. You, you clarify what Jesus meant. No, he meant yes. communion. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. That, yeah, yes. yeah. We want me com communion. He wasn't, yes. yeah, he was just Sorry. talking about communion, yeah. mm -hmm. drinking the, yes. you know, then the wine or the juice today and the eating the bread as yeah. communion where we become partakers as one with them, right. yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But they were thinking, you know, they, they were thinking they that's why, it. yeah. They were like, man, that's a hard saying. We don't know what he's talking about. We need to go on from here. Yeah. So you know, so separate. So he says here in verse eighteen, it says, "And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he's not believed on the name of the only begotten Son of God." And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, but what? That, and men loved darkness rather than light. See, some people, they don't want the light all the time. They don't want the new way. They still want the old way. Mm -hmm. They're happy and content in living their old way, doing their old thing, you know. But you do your part, you sold the word, and it's time to move on, you know. Mm -hmm. If they ain't trying to move, you don't need to be moving with them, mm -hmm. you know, going because they're not taking you to where you need to go. They're taking you back. And so it says right here, and, and because why? Their deeds were evil. And it says, for everyone that doeth evil, what? Hateth the light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be corrected or reproved. You know? Yeah. They'll be checked that way. Yeah. So in other words, reproved, or in other words, it'll say, uh, yeah. Be brought home, but he that doeth the truth, verse twenty-one, 
come into the light that his deed may be manifest, his works may be manifest that they're what? Wrought, they're worked in God. So that's what it is. And so just, I was going to get it's just for time's sake, but sometimes he, he, even in a, a relationship, you know, the, the old doesn't always like the new. You know, when you're changing, some people aren't always going to want to hang with you. Or some people get jealous of you and what? They don't want to see you move further in your walk. They want to try to pull you back, you know? Or they test you at times. There, there's a lot of different things that can go on. But the thing is, I've had friends when I, what's it called? In my past, when I first got saved, man, they thought I was crazy because I was talking the word and everything. They didn't want to hear that. But you know what? I was like, praise God. My thing, I'm clear. I know God's real now. I don't care. Well, you do what you got to do. I'm going to do what I got to do. But I, I know I'm holding on to this because this is real. And you know, you know, however it is. But if you want to be around me, I'm going to tell you the word. That's what you're going to hear. That's so true. you don't like it? Well, you know, yeah, I have a great life because I, I'm going to share the gospel. That's what I want to talk. You don't want to pray and hear the word? You know, that that's all fine and dandy. But some of them might not just want to be around it, you know. But, you know, I, I've learned as I grow, you know, how to... I'm saying that he that wins souls is wise. But, you know, it's people that you come in contact and you learn what to have a relationship to draw them into the Lord, you know. But there's old people that people have that they hold on. And sometimes that stagnates you because God doesn't want us to hold on to the past he has a brighter future because it says the path of the just in Proverbs 4 is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto a perfect day. Mm -hmm. So God, our day can get brighter and brighter rather than looking in the past where it's darker and darker. Mm -hmm. He's taking us out of our familiar place or out of our past relationship place to bring us into a new place, out of our own space, to bring us into a new place. Amen? Amen. Amen. So so we'll pray. Try to fit everything in. And, and if something's touched your heart, we're just going to pray. And if you see something that God's shared with you in your heart, we're going to pray. And uh, God, you know, you, you speak it before the Lord. The Lord will heal you of it. Sometimes you got to renounce it. And I ask the Lord to forgive me, and it, it, sometimes he'll, he'll he'll move the situation, or sometimes you gotta let go. There's people I had, a, man, I didn't want to, and I was like, all right, you know, okay, Lord, and just had to go and do, you know, what He said, because it wasn't a healthy environment, you know, for my life, you know, and it, sometimes you gotta know what's healthy for you, you know, it's like food, some food you can eat. Some food, man, it ain't good to keep eating that. You need to get rid of it, you know? And, and that's what it is. And food is words. What, what, what do they keep talking about? What do they keep always bringing up? Some things you don't need to keep hearing that. I, you know, my past was my past. I'm a new person now. If that's all you keep thinking, you know, God, he couldn't do a lot of works around them because of what? Their unbelief, you know? And so sometimes family too. I'm not saying you always to cut them off like totally. Some people, they might have to get away for a while just so God can do. But you want to know this is the Lord telling you to do that, you know? Amen. But God also is about winning souls, you know? And the best thing, love, it, 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 it never fails. That That's the main thing. Amen. So, love covers a multitude of sins. definitely. And I've learned that, yeah. Amen. We all learn that, praise God. Amen. So we'll, we'll go ahead and pray. Father, we, we thank you for your word right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we talked about a few things today, Lord. We talked about familiar places. We talked about, Father God, things we're afraid to face, Father. But you've called us into that place to overcome our fears, Lord. And, and even relationships, Father God. That, we might, that might not be healthy, that might not be good for us, Father God, to even sever those things. And Lord, we ask you, even by your Holy Spirit, you may be working in someone's heart right now, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And we ask you right now, Father God, 
that Lord, whoever the person is, those who are listening now, Father God, we ask you to move in their heart, Father God. We ask you to bring deliverance in their life, Father God. Lord, I thank you because your word says you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And you, you, you'll, you may take us to areas where we're not familiar with, but you're with us, Lord. And there's people you may not want us to have that affiliation with anymore because you called us into a new, a new life, Father God. You, you have a new purpose for our life, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we, we give these things to you, Father, in Jesus' name. And, and we just pray right now in the name of Jesus, Father God. I thank you, Lord. If those who need the severance with certain things in their life, Father God, I thank you for doing it right now in their life in Jesus' mighty name, even as they bring it before you, Father God. I thank you. Hallelujah. I thank you, Father. I sense it leaving now, whoever it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for doing it in their life, Father God. Because you said a new work you'll do, Father God. And you that begun a good work in their life, you're, the, you're going to do it with your will and your good pleasure, Father God. You'll complete it because you're the potter and we're the clay, Father. And you mold us, you make us, and you shape us. And we're conformed into your, in the image of your dear Son, Father God. We thank you, Father. We glorify you for it right now in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, hallelujah. We thank you for your perfect peace. Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. And we give you glory and praise and honor for it, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for working because you love us, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. You have great plans and purposes for our life, Father God. Bigger than what we can see in the natural, Father. And if we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, we give you the glory, honor, and praise, Father. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I sense someone. There's an evil spirit. I sense someone on the left side. That it's like a it's like a sword that just cut in, in that's just cut it's like a headache that doesn't you can feel it from far away but you can feel it even closer and it's something that it's an evil spirit father i bind that foul and clean spirit of witchcraft right now i take authority over you satan i command you evil spirit to loose and come out of them right now in jesus name and i cast you to the pits of hell i cancel your assignment satan i render you powerless over their lives right now in jesus name i rebuke you evil spirit i command you to take your stinky hands off them right now in the name of jesus i command you to loose and come out you evil spirit and I cast you to the pits of hell in Jesus mighty name the blood of Jesus is against you satan in Jesus mighty name the blood of Jesus is against you satan in Jesus mighty name. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. I render you powerless of their lives right now. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for healing and deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, thank you, Lord. And, and Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, oh, I just rebuke any inordinate affection, Father God. Like an unclean oh, affection, I rebuke that right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for severing it from them. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for doing it now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for healing. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Even on the left side, that thing is good. I sense it leaving now. In the name of Jesus, right now. In Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. In Jesus' mighty name. The blood of Jesus. 
Jesus is against you, devil, in Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus, lose God's people. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Father, we, we thank you, Jesus, we give you glory, hallelujah. and we give you the praise for oh, it. Thank you. Ashine me karasika marigato kama no kona mujene ne kota ya manusi mashine me zia soba koshaka se ibo pimi moemi bega satane se ibili zange kama na Jesus Christo loose God's people in the name of Jesus you have no power you have no authority in the name of Jesus resika toya manusi sanena. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for breaking that off the top of their head. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus, I command it to go in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you, Satan. In Jesus' name, I command it to go in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I command it to go in Jesus' name. Loose God's people, Satan. In the name of Jesus. Devil, you are a liar and the truth is not in you. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ro kasaka. Ro kasiki mina anamazi. Ro kasiki mina zia soba kushama. Eresera mandusi ya sanena muzika mana anuba. Mukoka. Mushine me hanaba kuseke. Mujene ne kota ya manusi. The blood of Jesus is against the devil in Jesus' and, mighty and, name. And someone's, someone's left knee Jesus. in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that pain in their knee right now. And I command that pain to go in the name of Jesus. And if you just move your knee, you'll see the pain that will leave in Jesus' mighty name. Because by Jesus' stripes, you're healed right now in the name of Jesus. And thank you, Lord, for touching her knee right now. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Oh, precious Jesus, hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for the Lord has broken through the enemies of your soul. He has scattered the bonds of those that encamp against you. He has broken the cords of wickedness that had entangled you. In Jesus' mighty name, and he destroyed it. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yonki mi muemi olile, yonki mi muemi bega satari. Say, be his anekamala Jesu Christu. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah.